Hello everyone, it is a great day for some chess. Uh, today we have episode four of this chess blowout series, and this episode features Magnus Carlsen playing Kirill Shevchenko. I hope I pronounced that correctly. And this is a blitz game, so five minutes on the clock here, and it looks like maybe a two second increment after each move and so this game was played in 2023 and Magnus Carlsen begins with e4 and c5 is the response the Sicilian defense and so this is a counter-attacking opening where instead of playing symmetrically with e5 c5 is played to help control this d4 square and now we have knight to f3 to help fight for the d4 square. And then knight to c6, putting even more pressure on this d4 square. And now Carlsen plays knight to c3, developing his other knight to help protect this e4 pawn and help control this d5 square, which is a common theme in the Sicilian defense where if black can play d5 with his d with his d pawn uh, usually this pawn will move one square to d6 and then later try and push forward to d5 and if that happens that usually frees up uh, black's position a little bit more and gives his pieces more room to maneuver and so now we have g6 so this is uh, looking like an accelerated dragon uh, defense here in the Sicilian. And so finally d4 is played. And so this g6 move, you see that will allow the bishop to move to g7 and attack down this diagonal and put even more pressure on this d4 square and also attack the c3 knight right down through the center. And so d4 is played and immediately black captures that center pawn uh, with one of his side pawns here. And so after Magnus recaptures, we see that black has an advantage of two central pawns to white's one, but white is developed a little more quickly than black. But now we have bishop to g7 attacking this knight and the knight, uh, black's knight, excuse me, is also attacking. So these two pieces pile up on the d4 knight. And so bishop to e3 is played to help protect this knight and develop a piece. And it looks like uh, white will also castle queen side. And that's why he is developing uh, these pieces faster and now we have knight to f6 so this puts a little bit of pressure on the center it uh, fortifies or helps fight for this d5 square uh, so that maybe later black will be able to play d5 and free up his position also this knight could jump in here uh, at some point and harass this bishop on e3. And so now we have the knight retreating back to b3. Uh, Magnus is possibly avoiding exchanges of pieces as the more pieces that are exchanged, uh, the more likely the game could end in a draw. Uh, and also by moving that knight, it may help avoid surprises of the bishop, the knight, and you know even this pawn possibly attacking the knight that was in the uh, d4 square. So it retreats. And now we have d6. So this move helps control the e5 square so that this pawn will not uh, possibly in the future push forward, maybe harassing the knight, but it also uh, lets this bishop have room to develop and so now we have f3 uh, this is a common move in uh, 
different Sicilian variations where this F3 pawn protects the E4 pawn. It also covers this G4 square to prevent the knight from coming down and harassing the bishop, uh, to prevent the bishop from possibly attacking the queen, but more likely it uh, just keeps the knight away from attacking this bishop, and it also helps to fortify a pawn storm here of pushing the g4 uh, with h4 and all these pawns marching up towards black's king side and so finally black castles to the king side and now we have queen to d2 so this is another common theme where the queen moves up to d2 and creates a battery with this bishop so many times the bishop can be played up to h6 and try and trade off this important dark squared bishop here which helps defend the king side and this is a powerful attacking piece uh, that aims down through the center of the board to the queen side which is where white will castle here and so we have here an interesting move this bishop develops to e6 and normally you do not want to place your bishop in front of one of your central pawns because now this pawn is blocked in but this bishop was very limited on where it could develop um, it can't go to any of these squares as the pawns cover that and if it moved to d7 uh, that would be kind of passive where it's locked in behind this knight and so also by moving the e6 it helps cover this important d5 square which is usually a battleground square in the sicilian defense uh, in a lot of the variations there'll be a fight over this d5 square and finally white castles queen side so now we have opposite side castling and in games with opposite side castling, where we have white castled on the queen side and black on the king side, the game usually becomes a race to throw your pawns forward. Now, as you have not castled on the same side, uh, if white would have been castled on the king side, then it may be more dangerous to push his pawns forward in front of his king. But as they're castled on the opposite sides, now white will race his pawns forward and black will try and march his forward. And whoever breaks through first or gets their attack going first uh, with this pawn storm will usually have the advantage. And the pawns will march forward and the pieces will funnel in behind those pawns to help uh, create a pretty strong attack. And so now we have knight to e5. Uh, this knight jumps into the center here. And from here, uh, it may jump here and fork the queen and the bishop and try and trade this bishop off. And so here we have the king moving to b1. And this is another common move in this variation where we see this half open c file. And here the king likes to move off of this file because black normally puts a rook here, maybe the queen here, and there's a possibility of uh, pressure forming down this half open C file. And so the king just steps aside and also to guard this pawn in case the queen would try and jump down here to A5 and trade off a knight and possibly capture on a2 but that's not as likely to happen uh, but we have finally rook uh, moving the c8 trying to put pressure down this half open c file to white's queen side and down uh, aiming close to the king here and so now the pawn storm begins on uh, white's king side here he marches this pawn up and this is something else that is common in this opening where we see the fianchettoed bishop where this g pawn is moved forward and the bishop is 
placed here on g7 now this g6 pawn can become a target by pushing this h pawn up and trying to attack this pawn and sometimes this h pawn is sacrificed by pushing up here to h5 and then if the knight captures uh, the rook could even capture that knight and break open these pawns on the king side and this can be a common and a common theme that's seen often in this variation all right so now h5 is played to block any more advances of this h pawn but also when this h5 move is played then there could be a future possibility of g4 being played to attack this h5 pawn and even if it's captured sometimes white will sacrifice pawns to gain open lines towards black's king here and so the game continues with bishop to e2 a developing move now to help connect the rooks and possibly move this uh d1 rook over towards the king side to help in an attack and this bishop helps to cover g4 here and so uh, when there's a push of this g pawn the bishop can help back up uh, this f pawn and the g4 pawn push and so now finally black is starting his pawn storm on the queen side against white's king and so now we have the bishop uh, moving here to uh, try and fight for this diagonal up here towards black's king side. Uh, for whatever reason, Magnus felt that he didn't want to just immediately play this bishop here and trade off as the king would end up coming down here. So if the bishop had moved to h6 uh, this rook could probably move maybe white's bishop would attack and trade off bishops and the queen would end up here on g7 uh, so magnus apparently did not want to play that line and so now queen to c7 is played putting more pressure down the half open c file toward white's king and so g4 is played and it looks like magnus gets his pawn storm in first and starts attacking before black has a chance to and so a capture is made here which helps open lines to the black king and so instead of recapturing here and allowing a knight to come down uh, here we have f4 being played first to drive one of these strong knights away and so here instead of the knight uh, coming down here to c4 it retreats backwards but it's attacking this bishop and so now the bishop being under attack goes ahead and captures another defender of black's king side this knight on f6 and after a recapture uh, now we have this knight jumping into the d5 square which is an important square in many sicilian defense variations and so black does not want to leave that knight there and the knight was attacking the queen so we have an exchange and after a pawn capture this chases this knight uh, further and now the knight decides to jump down into uh, the center of white's position but we see here that uh, now it is plus one 0.26 so it's over a pawn uh, worth of material in white's favor after this move so if we go back even before that it's uh, almost a pawn in uh, white's favor even though if we look at this position white has six pawns and black has seven so this is pretty amazing that uh, black is ahead by one pawn but white is almost 
ahead one pawn's worth of material just because his position is better than black's. We see black's position is kind of cramped. White has more space in the center. Uh, he's attacking a piece that must move, and so that will give white more time to continue his attack. And also, uh, lines are opening up here towards black's king. And so, here, knight to b4 is what the computer wants to see, so that's interesting. Um, the queen, it looks like, should not capture as we would have a pawn capture with check here. And so then uh, there's a possible continuation of the queen after capturing on c2, trying to mate here with the bishop and the queen. So here, after black plays this move, uh, we have the bishop recapturing here. And then... A capture of the knight, so the knights are exchanged. And then we have a5. So black is trying to get uh, a pawn storm moving here to get some kind of counterplay against white's king. But now we have h5. Magnus gets his attack uh, in first. He continues his pawn push here. Uh, attacking this g6 pawn and now this is ignored and black tries to get some counterplay but it is too late after h captures on g6 this pawn captures here and if we look uh, the time is running out so time was probably a factor as well and then after a capture here uh, we have rook to a8 trying to put pressure down this open file towards white's king. But the final move is queen to h2 here. And with this move, uh, Magnus Carlsen's opponent resigned because if we look at the evaluation, it is it has jumped drastically in white's favor here where <clears throat> white is just completely losing. Uh, the only move he can, ha he can make to uh, stop an eventual checkmate is, excuse me, it looks like, well, not the only move, but he can make this move uh, rook to a1 here and just buy some time where the king would just capture that rook and be ahead in material and white should win. But I don't know, we could play through that. It looks like rook to a1. And so white is forced to capture uh, with king captures. And then rook to a8 checks the white king and gives black a little breathing room to escape this attack up here with the queen there was a checkmate threat on h7 there and so then after the king moves uh, we have the king moving over to f8 and still white could proceed with bringing this queen up and now there's a threat here of mate on f7 and so uh, e6 or e5 would be played. Um, it looks like they're about even, but either way, if e6 is played or e5, um, we could have a capture here, but it looks like uh, rook to c1 attacking the queen is the move that the computer wants. It also it looks like all of these moves. So here white is just so far ahead that he's ahead by a rook and he has an attack on black. So this is why uh, Magnus Carlsen's opponent resigned. And so here we have uh, episode four of this chess blowout series where Magnus Carlsen just developed his pieces 
and slowly uh, build up to an attack where it was opposite side castling and it became a race to see who could push their pawns forward with a pawn storm trying to break through and Magnus Carlsen's attack broke through first and overwhelmed the black forces. And so I hope you enjoyed this episode four of the chess blowout series. Uh, if you've liked this video, uh, please like and subscribe and feel free to leave comments or suggestions. And also the 150th video for this channel is coming up soon and leave comments with your vote on who you think is the greatest chess player of all time. Thank you and have a great day.